This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, we go out to San Francisco, and when we do, Larry Bubbles Brown is on the other end of the phone most of the time. Most today, of the time, today right? I had a little bit of trouble getting to him because every time I would ring it, it said uh, uh, the phone is not uh, available or online or something. And I kept trying, and I then emailed you, and I tried to call your uh, your mobile phone, but you didn't answer that. And finally, yeah, I had the ringers down on all of them, and somebody called me on my landline right before you called, apparently. So. Well, you know, the other thing that gets to me is I kept saying to myself, Larry is such a Luddite about this sort of thing. How can he possibly have a problem with his phone? You know, he has, it's the only it's a landline. It's 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 anchored yeah. to the to the to the building. It goes out by a line that goes to the phone company. I mean leech with those champagne wishes and caviar dreams and you're listening to the incredible the memorable the wonderful the one and only alex ladies and gentlemen we go out to san francisco and when we do larry bubbles brown is on the other end of the phone most of the time most today the time. today i had a little bit of trouble getting sorry about that folks i accidentally hit the keyboard wrong so you'll have to hear the beginning of this interview just one more time or something and I kept trying, and I then emailed you, and I tried to call your uh, your mobile phone, but you didn't answer that. And finally, yeah, I had the ringers down on all of them, and somebody called me on my landline right before you called, apparently. So. Well, you know, the other thing that gets to me is I kept saying to myself, Larry is such a luddite about this sort of thing. How can he possibly have a problem with his phone? You know, he has, it's the only. It's a landline. It's 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 anchored yeah. to the to the to the building. It goes out by a line that goes to the phone company. I mean, I could see if he had problems with an with a with a wireless phone or whatever, but no. Yeah, and it doesn't even have a call waiting, so that's why. Oh, you don't have call waiting. You can't no. even go that far, can you? This is bare bones. Yeah. Yeah, you can't go that far. Yeah. You, you, why didn't you get call waiting? You wanted to be. I, I, I had. I canceled it years ago. It's expensive. I'm hardly ever on the phone. So. Well, but even the, the, it, it, look at today. You should have had call waiting. I should have. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I don't want to be uh, like your mother. You know, I don't want to nag you about this sort of thing. Why don't you have call waiting when I call? If you had to call waiting, you'd be able to pick up and say, "Oh, Alex, I'm on another line. I'll call you right back." Remember all the uh, God the uh, before cell phones, all the different services you could get for the landline. There was call waiting. There was Star sixty nine. What does Star sixty nine do? I forget now. If you didn't have a caller ID and somebody called you, you hit Star sixty nine. It would re- it would dial the number that called you. Oh, okay. All right. And that's the way you got even with people who were, like, giving you a bad time. And yeah, like you're right. That. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember Star 69, and wasn't there another one, Aster- Asterisk 69, that did something? There was, there was a- an Asterisk 8. Let's see, there's a there's one you can do to block your number if you're calling. <laughs> they had, like, a, I don't know, they charged, like, $5 for every service. It's total ripoff. And, yeah. But they must have had, like, 20 different things. Well, you know, the thing is, if you, I th- believe, if you on your current phone want to call somebody, say, in Europe, they charge you international charges, right? Mm-hmm. Right? If, if you call New York, do they charge you to call New York? No. No. They used to. They used to. Yeah. They used to. But the thing is, if you got it on, a, on your wireless phone, you can call anywhere in the world. doesn't cost you a penny. Oh no, that's right. They they do charge in the landline. They do charge long distance. Yeah, yeah. They still do that. Yeah. So if you're going to do long distance, use your mobile. Cause right. Because you, you're not going to pay for it. Don't use your landline. 
I yeah, I remember in the eighties got the the long distance charges were I was paying like a hundred bucks a month for that, and then you got you had the first cell phone of anyone I knew, and I remember you I think you had five hundred minutes. Yeah, they had some kind for of fifty dollars. I said, oh my god, that was such a great bargain at the time. Yeah, well, the thing is that that as time has gone on. Uh, all, all the phone companies and everything have kind of given up on trying to charge you per minute for every call you make to, say, New York, all right? So they just give you a blanket fee, and they charge, you know, like you pay $35 a month for your phone service, your wireless service, and uh, it's all included. You can call Mars for crying out loud. They don't care, yeah. you know. But then you got this, which is Skype. I'm calling you on Skype. And if you use Skype, uh, you can call anywhere in the world, actually, on Skype, I believe, without char- being charged for it. Or if you're charged for it, it's very minimal, very minimal. Uh, and, of course, you know, we can talk on Skype for as long as we want to, unless, of course, Skype hangs up on us, which happens occasionally, you know. Yeah, but you, you know, kids, uh, you're listening to two old people talk about the way phone service used to be. Well, you talk about uh, old phones, or I was in the uh, your old friend Curtis D. Martini was up yesterday, and we went up through North Beach, and we went to the Maritime Museum because I heard they had some really cool murals there. Yeah, which they did, and we found uh, they had two old phone booths, and they are really, really nice. Remember the phone booths for the pay phones? Yes, where you close the door and you had. Quiet and there. Yeah, a light really went on. Nice. A light went on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, uh, it was nice and quiet. They had kind of soundproofing in there, like this be- yeah. beveled kind of uh, uh, metal. And uh, uh, yeah, you 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 go in there and you make a call. There are no more payphones. No more. They don't even exist. Yeah, I haven't seen one in years. So. Yeah. Um, uh, and and they were. They were convenient, but it, what what killed them was was Wi-Fi, wireless rather, you know, just the regular mobile phones. Because who needs who needs a payphone? I, I do I need to go find? Hey, I better go find a payphone. I got to call home. No, I just pull it out of my pocket and start talking. I mean, the phone, not other things. Uh, Remember on the payphone, you'd be talking to somebody, and the operator come on. You got to deposit forty more cents. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. And and it's click click, and then you find your one coin short. Yeah, that happened all the time. You, you know what's interesting though? I always loved England because they were so civil. Now let me let me give you my perfect example of how civil they were. Let's say you're using a payphone in England. You have to deposit the equivalent of whatever you deposit to start the call into the phone. If you try to deposit it. Before, before you get your party, you can't deposit it because there's a bar that came down that prevented you from putting coin in the slot. Really? It only would allow you to put the coin in the slot and have it register once you got your party. You know, it wasn't like here where you had to put it in first and then call your party. And let's say you didn't get them, you're praying and hoping the quarter comes back. <laughs> yeah. Right? They would not take your quarter till they had provided their service. I swear to you, that was much more civil. Anybody who's ever been to Britain knows I'm telling the truth. You know? Uh, and I don't, I, of course, they probably don't have pay phones anymore over there either but uh, uh, when they did they were civil pay phones as opposed to ours which robbed many a quarter from me because it never returned it when I didn't get my party so. yeah I guess they are they used to have banks of pay phones at the airports remember oh yeah I mean you would go they was where's the pay phone over there and there were like 20 of them lined up yeah and you had to wait <laughs> because they were all being used yeah, and then uh, that's uh, not a not a germaphobe's dream of getting a dirty payphone. Well, that was the only way that you could say to somebody, "Hey, I'm here." You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, cell phones have changed everything. They've also changed our sociability. You know, you get on a subway car, and I swear to you, if I took a video of a subway car, everybody's looking at their phone. 
Nobody's looking at yeah. each other. Nobody's engaging with each other. They're just buried. Their nose is buried in this phone. And many of them, when they're outdoors, are almost run over by cars because they're so busy looking at their phone. Uh, it's created a very unsociable behavior. Oh, I, I see people looking at phones, walking into telephone poles, and falling over curbs. And yeah. I mean, folks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this because I don't want to sound like an old fart who's saying, you know, I hate these cell phones because they make people so unsociable and this is bad and that's bad. I mean, the good part is you got a phone in your pocket anytime you need it. You can call whenever you want to. When somebody's calling you, they can always get you. Maybe that's a negative. Maybe that's a negative. That is a negative because uh, there, there is something nice about being able to disappear. Well, you, can, you know, you can do that by just turning off the phone. Oh wait a minute! I can turn off the phone. I don't know if I can do that. You know. Yeah, people getting mad at you. I, I called you. I mean, Marjorie. I say, well, turn off your phone, and she goes, "How do I do that?" She doesn't <laughs> know how to turn off the phone. Which button do I push? You put. You know, I tell her like sometimes. You know, when a phone go, if phones have problems. You know, they get glitchy, and so the best way to solve the problem, and I always tell her this, is just reboot. That will usually solve any major problem. And she then says, how do I do that? You don't know how to turn off your phone? No. <laughs> you don't know how to turn it back on? No. And you've had a phone for how long? You know. So, I mean, I am always get things from her like, it's not working, Alex. I can't get... Please, Alex, come into the bedroom. I can't get my phone to do this or that. And I go and I reboot it. I said, what do I tell you to do? Just reboot. So, uh, you know. So you had the uh, first, that cell phone you had was huge, your first one. Well, it was a car phone. Yeah. It yeah. was a car phone, and uh, uh, it had a cradle, and it had a, it had a cord. Uh, and, uh, but, I, yeah, I was one of the first ones, wasn't I? You were, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I like that idea. I like being able to, you know, make a call from the car if I needed to. Or if I was going to be late for the sta to getting to the station in the morning, I would simply pick up the phone and say, I'm in the car. I'm on my way. I'm in Chinatown right now. You know. And uh, then I would have to take the Chinese people and, and uh, turn on my windshield wiper to get them off the hood of the car. Cause <laughs> they, 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 there was always this big joke, and I don't want to do Asian stuff here, but that Asians were bad drivers. And they were bad drivers. Now, wait a minute. Don't say, Alex, you're anti-Asian. I'm all for Asians driving, and some of the best drivers I've ever known are Asian. That's kind of like some of my best friends are black. But anyway, it's close. Anyway, they, the reason why some of the older Chinese were bad drivers is simply because they came from a place like Hong Kong where you drive on the other side of the street. So the, the way they learned to drive wasn't, didn't have the same kind of uh, rules that driving here did. But did you find that many times Chinese were bad drivers? In San Francisco, I didn't notice any more than the, any other race. But, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that was uh, when I started comedy. But, that was everyone had a bad Asian driving job. Well, I uh, I I, uh, I asked uh, an Asian friend once why uh, Asian drivers with bad drivers. He says just the old ones. He says not the young ones. It's the old ones that came from the other country. Okay. And then came here and learned how to and 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 drove a car. Because they just weren't used to the re rules of the road here, and that was the reason why. From then on, I, you know, I never made another Asian bad Asian driver joke. Yeah. I turned them into old lady jokes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> None of which you can tell today because it's either racist or ageist or sexist. And if you tell a, a joke about an old Asian lady, then it's a it's racist. You've hit the trifecta. It's then you're canceled. It, it, it's the trifecta. You, you're racist, you're uh, uh, sexist, and, and you're ageist. So, God, I hope this shit ends. <laughs> what? Uh, all, the, all the proper... All this, yeah. Well, I, I mean, it should be, you know, a comedy club should, be, should have a, um, a sign saying, this is a um, uh, 
what do you call it, free zone, like, uh, you know, a, a woke... Censorship, censorship this, free zone. This is a woke free zone, okay? Whatever that means, I think, you know, that's the newest term. Uh, that once you walk into a comedy club, a comedian is allowed to tell jokes about anybody for any reason. Right. And if you don't like it, leave. Yeah, it's very simple. That's it's simple, hard right? Thing to solve. Yeah, it's an easy thing to solve. So, just uh, you know, um, uh, get live with it. You know, I mean, I was talking to Slayton the other day. He 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 isn't even he isn't doing his act anywhere. He's not working. Um, that's that's what I heard. So he's not working at all. He's not working at all. But he's going to do a thing. I think in Vegas with Gilbert Gottfried that he's going to MC or something like that. But he he said that he just hasn't been working. But number one because of COVID, obviously. But the other reason is is that look at his act. It, 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 it he he get booed off a stage for it now. Oh my God! Yeah, just, you know, and and I, I I just think a comedian should have the right to do anything he wants to do. Okay. Yeah, and With, Bobby's probably the greatest club comic of our generation. And every time he ever told an Asian joke, every time he told a, a black joke or a Hispanic joke or a, a woman joke, my wife's so fat, blah, 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 it, you never felt he hated anything. You know? No. He did it with such humor that you never felt he, he hated it, that it was coming from a place of hate. You know, yeah, but, usually the groups he made fun of, never, they were laughing. It was always the white people that got upset, the guilty white people. Oh, it, it, always white people. It's always yeah. the race that isn't affected by the joke that complains about the joke. Right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't. I don't think you ever had anything in your act that I can remember. No, know? mine was always a... <laughs> my humor was always directed at myself, pretty much. So. Well, it was, it was self-pejorative. Self-deprecating, yeah. yeah. Self-deprecating, yeah. Uh, the best one being your opening line, which is somebody stole my identity and now he has no life. Boom! There's Larry Bubbles Boom, Brown. Yeah. yeah, but you never, you never did any Asian jokes or women jokes. No, no. Or, I remember the guy. There's so many. I, if if you did a women joke, jokes, it was about they, how they. Not did. only they were just bad. <laughs> well, if you ever did a joke about women, it had to do with how they didn't like you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it was at your expense. Um, yes, I'm the number one cause of vaginal dryness. But. Yeah. Ex oh, that was one of my favorite lines. <laughs> 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 you know. Um, but my question is, uh, how about the other comedians you work with? Have they had to adapt that you know, the ones you know? I, well, mean, I think so. Yeah, no one's, uh, like you said, Bobby could not do his act now. The, the younger audience, their heads would literally pop off. So Yeah. That's not right. That's not proper. Wait a minute. You're in a goddamn comedy club, moron. Nothing's proper Lenny, in a moment. Lenny Bruce would be rolling over. Oh, when Lenny Bruce would probably be hung by the nearest tree. You know? Yeah. Although, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Did he, he, he was more political than he was, it did anything about races or whatever. I'm trying to think. No, Lenny Bruce might have been able to survive today. He had a lot of sexual material. What, was there sexual material? I mean, I'm trying I to think. think. I, I thought he got arrested in San Francisco for dropping the F bomb. Yeah, but that was later on in his career. I'm talking about in the beginning of his career, the early part of his career, the first couple of albums. I think it's pretty hard to find anything there that would not play today uh, in this woke environment. I hate using that term. Yeah. But in this woke environment. Uh, and um, I can't imagine that, for instance, you work with Dana Carvey, that he would have any trouble. I can't remember Dana ever having any material that, you know. No, not at all. Was yeah. disparaging He's towards tweaking. anybody. Uh, yeah. His comedy was more about how you look like a mannequin in, a, in Sears, you know. Uh, yeah. And who else do you work with? Is this a Hispanic comedian you work with, right? Uh, Felipe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but he doesn't have any trouble because you know he, he, he's the race he's talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, he doesn't have any. Um, although, does he? Did he have to do any ad adaptations to his act? I mean, to change. I things? don't think so. But like, because uh, it is mostly about uh, like 
what's his joke he's got? Uh, <laughs> two Mexicans were in a freak accident. They both had insurance. <laughs> But you see, he can get away see, with now, it. See, now, if a white guy said that... It, yeah, but he can get away with it. If, if yeah, Bobby yeah. had done that joke, Bobby would have been vilified. Okay? Yeah. I mean, it's just you can't... It, it's sad because when I was younger, and I, I always paid attention to what went on before I was born and the kind of comedy that went on before I was born. And what was so great was the fact that... Um, What's, what, what am I looking for here? What was so great was what we called the dialect comics, you know, in vaudeville. Mm-hmm. Uh, every every comedian that came on, every comedy team, were usually a dialect team of some sort, either an Italian dialect or a Jewish dialect or whatever. And we were able to laugh at our differences. And, and that doesn't exist now. And it's very hard. I w- I'd say if I were a comedian coming up today, I don't know what I would do yeah. as material. And I think that laughing at everyone's differences, that kind of stuff actually brings people together, whereas this crap we got now drives people apart. Yeah. Well, I mean, Henny Youngman's career would have been over after his first line. Yeah. Take my <laughs> wife, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, what was it? I was watching Rodney Dangerfield on like the Tonight Show, and he had one great joke, which was, "I said to my wife, is there another man?'" She says, "I hope so." <laughs> yes, there has to be. <laughs> there has to be. That's the line. There, that's the line. You got it. I forgot. Oh, I didn't God. get it right. Is there? Is there another man? There has to be. That's, now, that, there's a funny joke in like what less than ten words. Yeah, and there's a funny guy, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he didn't hit the, the the you know hit hit the button every time, but he he came damn close most of the time. I mean, some people can consider him one of the best comics ever, don't they? Oh yeah, absolutely beloved. Beloved. And 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 yeah. there was a he must have been an influence in you in some way. Because there was a yeah, self- I like the uh, the self deprecation and the uh, I just like the and those quick tight jokes when you you got something funny under ten words that's yeah. pretty amazing. But why are you why are you self deprecating? Is it kind of a defense in a way against the audience? It, not really. I kind of thought I thought for most people I thought life sucked so I thought people could identify with it but because I've had people come up and say they felt bad for me after a show and it's <laughs> yeah well, yeah uh, you just hope they're not talking about how bad your act was yeah, yeah. I felt bad for you oh I mean, why the act sucked and you you sucked with it uh, yeah. you know now, it, it, but self deprecation many times is used as a defense in other words, if you if you uh, are self-deprecating, then the audience can't put you down because you've right. already done it. You know. Yeah, they, they can't. That's a good point. Yeah. Also, because you're self-deprecating and you pr- present yourself as this, you know, loser. Okay. Um, uh, they they have no way to heckle that. I mean, do you get hecklers much? Hardly ever. What you got heckled? I remember this. You got heckled by what's his name? The guy, uh, uh, oh, Hunter Thompson. Hunter Thompson. You were doing a thing at the Mitchell Brothers. The Mitchell right before the theater opened, they had a uh, private party, and they had me and a couple other comics, and we went down there, and we were performing mainly for the strippers and uh, the employees. And uh, Hunter Thompson had been living in the Mitchell Brothers theater. He was writing a book, I think, and. Uh, I think he was by. He just started heckling me. I just and and he was never sober. I didn't even answer. I just thought, well, it's kind of an honor to get heckled by Hunter Thompson. Yeah, but what did he say? I, it was nonsensical. I think he was really on drugs or out of his mind. Yeah. Yeah, but he but it, it threw your timing off. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, that yeah that it, that is kind of a badge of honor that you were. Heckled by Hunter Thompson. Yeah, I should. Yeah, it's a kind of a good story. I should. Uh, yeah, 
bring I'd, that up. Sorry. Yeah, I had forgotten about that till just now, and then I said, "Yeah, you were the guy that Hunter Thompson heckled." No. Wow, that's amazing. Well, uh, let me see. We got about a minute left. Anything you want to plug? Are you going to be anywhere? I will be. In, <laughs> let's say I'd, I'll be at the Punchline uh, August thirty first. Oh, really? And it's open. Yeah. It's open, but the way things are going, maybe it won't be. So. With masks? Uh, not they weren't, not not right now. They're still. See the answer I think to they that. They are limiting it to sixty percent, maybe, but mm. uh, there's no mask. Uh, the the answer to that was uh, with masks, and you go not only if you're holding the place up. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, always good talking to you, Larry. Good to hear from you, Alex. It's Lawrence. Bubbles Brown. We don't have a, 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 another word to change for bubbles to make it sound fancier, but it's Lawrence Bubbles Brown. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. Bye. Thanks, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. All righty. I'm sorry. Oops. Got to turn on the lights. There we go. Okay. Uh, hi there. How are you, everybody? Uh, good to see you. Uh, nice, uh, nice to have you here. Uh, and uh, we have two people waiting. There's three people waiting. Oh, all of a sudden, I thought I was going to be here with nobody tonight. And then all of a sudden, these people start calling. Uh, and we have, uh, let's see here, uh, Josh Wheeler. And we have uh, Vernon Nunn and... From last night and from Australia, Ross Manuel. Hello, Ross. How are you this evening? And uh, he hello to um, uh, Josh. Hello, Josh. Hello. And hello to Vernon Nunn. Hello, Vernon. How you doing? I just lost my own picture here. Did you lose your own picture? Yeah, what happened? I don't know. I'm not there. Yeah, let me... I turn it off or turn it back on yeah i'm not good at doing things long distance uh you know oh here's jeff stein okay jeff hello jeff how are you hey how, how are you doing vernon you've got it yet huh? can you see me i can see you we can see you fine oh. yeah okay yeah i can't see myself though for yeah. some reason yeah but well, can you see oh, well. can you see everybody else yeah i well, see everybody well, that's else. all that matters when we can see you so it's terrific Okay. Uh, I got something to start out with tonight. This is kind of fun. You might enjoy this, folks. You know, you know that I'm I'm up for uh, uh, I've been nominated for induction into the Radio Hall of Fame, uh, but I'm up against three other people or groups. Of, one of them's a team. Uh, one is Sally, Jesse, Raphael. The other is some team down in, down in Philadelphia. I wish I could tell you their names, but I never heard of them before in my life. And the fourth one is Larry Elder, uh, a right-wing talk show host who is now running for governor in California in what is that horrible, horrible runoff thing they've got going there. I mean, it's really a terrible, terrible... Uh, Thing. What they do is they say, we want to recall Gavin Newsom, okay? So if you want him recalled, vote you want him recalled, and then here's a group from 55 people who are running against him, all right? And the one who wins with the most votes, not with 50%, not with a certain percentage, but the most votes becomes governor. He, if somebody could become governor with literally 2% of the vote, okay? Uh pretty pretty stupid thing that goes on out there in California uh, and Larry Elder is leading the batch who are of course see if, if you vote that you want Gavin Newsom then you're finished if you don't want Gavin Newsom then you have to pick from below who would you like to see be governor pretty I think uh, J Josh will probably agree with me pretty stupid idea that whole recall one of the choices system. none of the above no no they don't have that and they should I guess <laughs> But anyway, so Larry Elder is not only running for governor of the state of California and leading, by the way, among the 55 people who are, you know, he's got something like 10% or whatever, 
Well, it comes out today, and I'm, I wonder how the uh, people over there at the uh, Radio Hall of Fame are going to feel about this one. Allegations by Larry Elder's fiance of verbal and emotional abuse have roiled the California gubernatorial campaign of Larry Elder. Uh, Alexandra Datig gave an interview to Politico's Carla Marinucci saying she broke off her engagement to Elder in 2015 after an incident in which he took out a gun while high and threatened to throw her out. I thought it was Phil, a Phil Spector moment, Dadig added. Now Dadig, I get the, the story gets better, okay? Dadig, who once worked for Heidi Fleiss, now you know what you do when you work for Heidi Fleiss, right? She was a madam, wasn't she? Heidi Fleiss was a madam, and I guess Dadig was a hooker. All right? A, a lady of the evening, a, sounds better. Well, it could be the daytime, too. You know, anytime you need one, there. If I, Heidi had one available, she she was an upper class escort. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dadik, who once worked for Heidi Fleiss, later becoming an informant and witness in the Hollywood Madam's case, and says uh, she served for a time as Elder's streaming audio and web producer, told Marinucci that she feared for her safety and sobriety while uh, with Elder and that he respond, he demanded, get this, that she get a tattoo, okay? Uh, that she get a tattoo that re would read, uh, uh, let me see here, Larry's girl, right? Uh, the Los Angeles Times reported that Dadic, in a separate interview, made some of the same claims. There is Elder, the brand, the one on the radio, and the one everyone sees, Dadic told the Times. And then there's the Larry Elder after the show, the one with the insults, the Tasmanian devil rhetoric and hoodwinking. She complained that Elder was constantly smoking pot and showed the Times a cell phone video in which Elder claimed to have introduced Snoop Dogg to the evil weed. I am the one who made him what he is. He referred to it as the evil weed. Elder presently the front runner among 46 candidates. I, I was wrong, it was not 55, it's 46. Is looking to succeed incumbent Gavin Newsom if he's recalled in the simultaneous vote, furnished a statement of the Times generally denying Daddick's charges, saying he never brandished a gun at anyone. I grew up in South Central and knew exactly how destructive this type of behavior is. It's not me and everyone who knows it's not me. These are salacious allegations. That's usually the answer for that kind of thing. So here's another hypocritical Republican. Okay. Here's another hypocritical right winger. Um, however, I'm not going to put him down for smoking pot. But I am going to put him down for smoking pot and allegedly brandishing a gun while he was high on pot. You know. And this is the guy that... Uh, I wonder if he's Phil listening. That yeah. Phil it voted for in an absentee ballot. Phil, if you're thing. listening, do you have buyer's remorse? Um, you know. So anyway, and that's also the guy that they're considering to be in the Radio Hall of Fame. Be that I, 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 If he wins, I'm going to write a letter to the Broadcast Hall of Fame and saying, "Boy, you really pulled it off this time, guys." Got the yeah. right guy. Yeah, I voted for you twelve times, Alex. You did, did you really? You have tell. Yeah, I've got twelve emails. So really? Oh, okay, good, one. good. Leave it to a guy who knows <laughs> Morse code. You know, that, yep. that works. Josh, what do you think? Sound like a normal Republican uh, deal here? I think that sounds exactly like the type of person I would expect to be elected governor of California. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, yeah. So anyway. if there were an opening for the governor of Illinois, I think that he should take up residence there because it sounds like he would fit in well. What do you, what do you, what have you got there, uh, 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 Brian Neary? How do I cross off Larry Elder's name on here now? You don't cross it off. You just don't check it. <laughs> and if he isn't elected governor of California, perhaps he could be the new host of Jeopardy. 
Well, yeah, that's right. That's it's right, because they're making a lot of good decisions on that one, aren't they? Yeah, he gave seven or eight shows. He's gone. Of course, they've and got a they've got a nighttime. Maybe if, what? Then maybe a few days later we could cancel him and move on. Right. The um, uh, the, the Jeopardy thing. Um, you, you know who is the? Uh, oh, uh, Phil uh, sends me a note here. Uh, I'm still happy with Elder, but are you starting to miss Trump? Oh my God! Uh, not even for a moment. Okay, I think as far away as Australia, Russ is. Oh, you heard uh, what Trump is claiming Ross, today? Russ, rather, Russ isn't even. Uh, why do you call you Russ? Ross isn't even uh, feeling uh, remorse about Trump being gone, are you? No, it's been over a year, and we have not covered him at all in the entire time, and it has been a glorious time. Yeah. Was he on the news? Entire... Was he on the news every night there? Yeah, because the, the shit that would come out of his mouth, just continuously. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard what he's claiming now? What's he claiming now? He's claiming that because of the fiasco that's going on in Afghanistan, Biden should resign, but he's also claiming credit for the fact that the fiasco that's going on in, in Afghanistan is something that he set up. Yeah. He predicted it, that the chaos would occur because of the way he was pulling the troops out. And he started pulling the troops out in such a way that it was very difficult for it to be reversed once it got started. I see. But he predicted that the that the. Uh, yeah. the so why why doesn't he say I feel sorry for Biden that he had to somehow have this can kicked down to his part of the road? Because he that would require him to take responsibility. Oh, of course he is plausible deniability. Constantly. Constantly. He talks out of both sides of his ass. Or farts on both out of both sides of his ass. That would be even a better uh, statement. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, anyway, it, uh, it, uh, it, it, it Larry Elder is a perfect example of what I call hypocri the hip hypocritical uh, lives of right-wing talk show hosts. Okay? I think if you scratch beneath the surface on, surface on bo most of them, especially the ones that, you know, like Hannity and so on, you'd find some pretty skeezy stuff going on, you know, because they're just have skeezy you heard, people. Have you heard what Hannity and a lot of the other Fox uh, hosts have been promulgating on their, on their channel for a COVID cure? A co oh, you, you're talking about the... Uh, uh, Ivermectin. Iver Ivermectin? Ivermectin. What is Ivermectin? Is it sounds like a joke it's, you're going to pull. It's a medicine that's used to deworm horses. Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> Wait a minute. Are they actually on Fox saying that? Yes. Yes. There's videotape of them talking about how great Ivermectin <laughs> is to cure COVID. Ivermectin, is it? How's, how's it spelled? Yeah. I V E R M E C T I N. I V E R. M E C T I N. I, oh, I can't type anymore. Iver and then what? Mectin? M E C T I N. M E C T I N. Let me see here. Not use Ivermectin to treat. Okay. Um, it's intended for animals. That's what I'm yep. reading so far here. Uh, what is the first drug that was approved by the. No, that's not the one. Uh, Ivermectin. Uh, I want to see if. Yeah, let me go to the news thing here if it says anything about Fox uh, mm -hmm. saying it. But um, some people are taking an anti parasitic to treat COVID. Here's why yep. it's a bad idea. And then uh, I haven't got time <laughs> to read the article. But. Um, fact check animal ivermectin should not be used on humans. Really, they're saying that who's saying this on Fox? Laura Ingram, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity. Oh my God. What's going to happen to all these people that take it because they listen to these douchebags? Well, 70% of the poison control calls in Alabama this past week have been from people who have taken ivermectin. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, God. Hello. Hmm? Hello. Yeah, hi there, Ray. How you doing? Hey, Alex. I'm doing good. 
How going, are you? Going down the store to get some ivermectin? Yeah, whatever that <laughs> is. <laughs> hey, I just, I just wanted to say uh, the, the show two nights ago, I watched it yesterday. It was really, really good. Really? The whole discussion. I loved it. Oh. Yeah, with Patrick was on. You guys were talking about Afghanistan. It was great. Yeah. And there was a, a new guy in there who knows all about uh, Afghanistan. And, um, hey there. I don't know his name. I'm hey. Me- <laughs> yeah, there you are. Yeah, Ross. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> yeah, was great. That was, I, re- I learned a lot. I watched it yesterday. Well, they have ivermectin for humans. Or it says what is here. It? But uh, they, they uh, I, I think it's just for animals. Yeah. Advanced That's what my daughter said. She works at a vet clinic. Yeah, yeah. They use it for 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 animals, right? Wow. You know, I mean, how Fox can allow their people to do this without checking with medical authorities? You know, because they're you know if somebody dies doing this, yeah. they're going to be responsible. And they're going to get the living daylight suit out of them, which I can't say I'm sorry about, but I am sorry for the people who might die or get deathly ill from using this crap. Well, they'll just, they'll just use the same argument that they, their claim is so ludicrous that no one in their right mind will follow it. And that's the, that's the defense they've used in all the other, these other grandiose claims that they keep making. Yeah, but all these hosts are saying, oh, this works. <clears throat> you know, and nobody's there to say to them, no, you can't say this. I mean, if I ran a network like that, I, I don't care if it was MSNBC or CNN or Fox, I would put out the rule that if you're going to give any advice like that, you're fired. Mainly because you're not a doctor and you shouldn't give out medical advice that hasn't been verified. You know? Um, so, I mean, he, can you imagine people using this instead of taking the uh, injection, instead of taking the uh, uh, vaccine? The vaccine? It makes no sense at all. But then again, these people have no brains at all. So, what can we say? Uh, yeah, they're afraid. They're afraid of the vaccine, but they'll put a horse dewormer in their in their. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff, you're up in New Hampshire. How is it up there? Uh, Jeff, can you hear us? He's Jeff, muted. He's muted. Oh, he's muted. Unmute. Unmute yourself. Is he, is he still muted? No, yeah. I'm not. There muted. we go. Oh, there we there go. There he goes. Okay. We were worried about uh, you for a couple it, of nights because you didn't call. Yeah, you, well, it was very difficult, you know, and uh, because I was officially sick, even though I wasn't sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he tested positive for COVID, and then he went back and got another test and tested negative, and then he got tested. Two more tests. T- yeah, a second time and negative. Oh. Yeah, so I am healthy, but anyway, we were supposed to all go together with the whole family uh, to the Cape. Yeah, and then we canceled it. Yeah. So the next thing is, all the kids w- went up to New Hampshire because they have a. Uh, one of them used to live there, so they have friends there who have places, and they found a place to stay. So, sure as heck, we went there, and today it was absolutely gorgeous, beautiful day. We're on the boat and all that nice stuff. But now, tomorrow... Ah, yes, the hurricane. The hurricane of hell is coming on Sunday, I guess. It's supposed to hit here maybe on Saturday late. Yeah. But you know what's happening on Saturday here? They're having that big, uh, 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 um, what do you call it? A a super, concert. super spreader event in uh, yeah. Central Park. Jeez. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to leave early tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and uh, Well, if you had, no, I wouldn't leave early. I'd stay there till it passes. The reason being that when you head south, it's going to be coming north. I know, I know, but I gotta tell you where I'm right here on the water. Yeah. And and it's all these lakes and stuff like that. Whoa. Yeah, so close these all the flooded. windows and hank hunker down. Yeah. Put on the well, I live in uh, Connecticut, it's we're high up. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we'll be okay. Yeah. 
You, It'd be yeah. nice to see where we live. Are you going to get any of this, Josh? This hurricane? No, no. Oh, too yeah. far west. You're too far west? Okay. You're lucky. All right. I mean, not that I know of. I don't know. I should probably. Yeah. Read Alex the is going to be report. right in the center of it. Well, I don't know. I'll tell you, be right in the center of it are the people in Central Park watching Bruce Springsteen <laughs> blow away. <laughs> you know. They're going to cancel. Huh? Yeah, they should. They'll cancel it. They should have canceled it because of COVID. I mean, things are bad again. Them, Haven't they read about it? They worry about us eating in a restaurant, right? And they get a pack into Central Park. Yeah. yeah. Stuck together like sardines. No, they, it's like they, they're food. not packing it. Packed is 300,000. They're only oh. going to allow 70,000 in Central Park. Oh, I'm sorry. Only 70,000. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't have the Delta variant after that, Alex, then what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget to you put know, the mask on. <laughs> yeah, all right. Everybody's around. Well, come on. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and now they're saying about about uh, COVID, that and this is wonderful that that uh, the governor of uh, Florida, which you know Florida is like, oh, God, it, it, it's Moron it's Center. terrible, terrible. But he's saying you know there's always remdesivir, they're always the what do they call them um, micro clonals or monoclonal antibodies, mono, monoclonal antibodies, and you can take those. And you'll be fine. It'll just keep you from having to be hospitalized. Yeah. Do you realize that in order to do that, no, you'd have to go to a hospital to do it because it's intravenous and it's by a drip. It's an infusion. Yeah, yep. it's an infusion. So it's it takes not, about 20 minutes. Yeah, but still, you got to yep. go to the hospital to get it done. Yeah. Or a clinic of some sort, and they want to watch you for an hour after the infusion. Yeah, but the, and the monoclonal antibodies aren't ne don't necessarily work, do they? Yes, they it, keep you from from uh, being hospitalized if you have right. COVID. So that is now the uh, Florida governor's idea of how you protect yourself. Now, what's cheaper for the state? Putting these monoclonal antibodies in somebody, or just giving them a vaccine? You know, they they only work if you're infected for just a couple of days. Mm -hmm. If if you're like really sick, they don't really help you, you know. You, you have to get it in the first day or two. Early. Yeah, yeah. you got to get it early. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh boy, you know. But the good news, it's widely available. Oh, it is widely available. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, at least uh, there's something, some good news that way. But uh, uh, it's it's just it's just getting so ridiculous. I don't know. Did, I, did you um? Hear what the the just the the attorney general of Texas said today. No, he was on CNN or something, and he was going, he was going. Well, ninety percent of the people that are getting sick, are that are unvaccinated, are, are black people. I'm like what? Where did he get that fucking bullshit? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Like, Say that again. He said that. He said, he said something like ninety nine percent of the people who are getting sick and hospitalized now from COVID are black people who chose not to get vaccinated. He said that on TV. I don't, I don't know that that's a, 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 is a reliable statistic. It's a fucking lie. Especially, Flat out rape especially from anybody in government, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> uh, in Texas. Uh, like, it's a fucking psycho. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, they probably wish that because you know how they feel about black people down in yeah, Texas. Right, exactly. You know, they they hope they'll die, but yeah. you know, no, it's it's just I, I'm sorry. You know, I mean, there should be there should be laws preventing governors from doing what these two governors are doing. They're literally putting people's lives in danger, and they're putting their their, their lives in danger by passing ordinances which make it more difficult for people to use masks in certain situations and to be in, in, vaccinated and so on. Um, you know, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. No, people, people can use masks if they want to, but they have to have the freedom not to use the mask if they want to. Oh, in other words, they can go in somewhere to eat dinner, yes. even though they haven't been vaccinated and they don't want to wear a mask. Yes. Hmm. Okay. So, in other words, he's encouraging people to infect other people. Yes. That's wonderful. That's it's, it, it's your right 
to infect other people. Uh, Josh, am I right, or is this whole country going to hell in a handbasket? Oh, I don't think it's quite that bad. We're we're getting there. Not quite that bad. Uh, I mean, I think it's turning around from where it was a year ago, a year and a half ago. And the overall, I mean, the COVID thing, might, you know, well, isolated among itself well, well, might not it, be much better. But the country itself is overall, I think, in better shape. But but it, it is it is infected with this horrible disease of people uh, who are making and politicizing vaccines. Mm. You know, and, and yeah, they're, I mean, they're, uh, they're still there, and they're all the Trumpers. You know. Yeah, I mean a lot of them. You know, I mean it's. Uh, yeah, I wish it wasn't like that. I mean, if people had, um, you know, misgivings about it or. Uh, you know, didn't want it for certain reasons. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that, you know, that would be fine. I mean, that's one thing. Um, but I don't think a lot of it really comes from that. I think a lot of it is, you know, um, the team that I play for is leadership told me that this was stupid. So now that's what I think, you know, I think it's like you said, it's very, very politically motivated. I mean, it, it's very politically motivated as a matter of fact. Yeah. I, I don't really know that that's even going to, I don't know that that's going to work for Republicans. I mean, I think they see that as a ticket to the midterm. So that's what I think's you know, sad about. It. I mean, again, if, if you didn't think the vaccine was worth your time or a good idea or whatever, and you could sit down and you could say, and, and here's my reasons why and everything, I think, you know, fine, that's a discussion and we could have it. But I don't think a lot of people are thinking along those lines i think that they are thinking well you know i want this guy to be president or whatever and he's against it so you know i'm going to be against it we're going to get this train going and see if we can get this guy elected i mean i i don't know that that that's going to work for them but, you know it might well i think things are terrible in that what we have a, we've had a tendency to do now is uh just get really dumb about everything you know, well, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I can't believe the stupidity that is running rampant in this country. And I'm I mean, not, I don't and I don't like to call people stupid and yeah. make them feel bad about their feelings. But when it comes to this, they're stupid. You know? The scariest part is the 2022 midterm elections. If the Republicans take control of the House again, the dumbest guy in the House of Representatives could become Speaker of the House in Kevin McCarthy. Wow. Really? Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't, I don't like some of the, I don't like a lot of the hypocrisy I see. I mean, you know, I mentioned it last week, but I mean, I, I, I just don't, again, if you don't like it or whatever, fine. But I don't really understand that, you know, we've heard for a very long time, you know, even decades that, you know, wow, you know, the government just doesn't have any place coming into your local school and telling your, kids what they should learn and all that you know this should be up to the, the local school board who gets elected by the parents and with the involvements of the parents and everything mm -hmm. you know and just all this personal freedom and individual choices and all that and then you know you have these states where these governors just sign executive orders saying hey you, you can't you can't, you can't impose a mask mandate in your school and, and so again i don't even want to have the debate over masks i don't want to have a debate about do they work? Are they a good idea? Because that part of it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is they've abandoned their own longtime hardcore principle mm -hmm. in favor of making it a political issue, right? Right. I mean, where is their conservatism now? Where is their personal choice of freedom now? Where is their local government is the best kind of government thinking? You know, the local Taze Valley School District right here that I live in with, I don't even know, you know, 2,000 students and 20,000 residents in the county electing these five member school boards. And they met with all the principals of the four or five elementaries in the middle school and the high school. And they all decided they wanted a mask mandate. And that's that's what we should do. Well, that that should be their thinking. Wow, that those local people decided that in their county, things are pretty bad and they need it. And hey, over here, 75 miles to the north there's this other county and 
that's not bad at all. Hardly anyone's sick, and they didn't want a mask mandate and here and there. So they didn't think any of that was going to work. What they did, they didn't do this in Ohio, but what I'm saying is like Texas and Florida and all that. Oh, no, nope, I'm just going to sign an executive order that says you can't do that. Oh, and as a matter of fact, if you do, I'm going to assign punitive damages to you for that. As a matter of fact, we're, hell, we're not even going to pay you. I mean, yeah. It's that a, is it's, so far from a real conservative's principle. I don't, I don't even know that. I mean, neoconservative. It's the I mean, opposite. It's, it's the opposite. Well, I mean, I, I think that the problem that we have is that people who claim to be, uh, claim to be conservatives, really aren't. You know, they just they just calling themselves conservatives to be able to wave a certain flag. But are you going to tell me that Rand Paul's a conservative? Of course are, not. Are you going to tell me that uh, that any of these douchebags are that Larry Elder is a conservative? You know, these are people that are just out for their own best self-interests, and uh, I mean, you know. I mean, that, that's what I'm saying is I don't understand. You know, I mean, it's 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 stupid to me. I mean, again, I don't even want to have the debate over masks. I'm, I'm talking about the process of how they get there. I mean, it's just, you know, what these governors are doing is asserting a sort of power that yeah. they may not even have in, a, in some of their states. And even if they do, they have decried that they shouldn't have for years, you know? You know, yeah. these governors shouldn't have the power to do this, that, and the other. I mean, and here they are using well, them. Well, there's, there's an old saying that goes... You can fool some of the people some of the time, but not all of the people all of the time. But if you can do it I mean, just it's, once, you'll be elected for own, four it's years. It's their own selfishness, really, and and you know their own greediness and their own conniving ways. And I mean, it's no different than you know, my goodness, the states runs the elections. How dare the federal government? They want to pass all these daggone election laws and these voting right laws, and the federal government coming coming down here to Mississippi and telling us how to run our elections and all of a sudden they lost the national election and my god this crap where these states can just make up any rules they want is, is stupid. <laughs> we should have federal guidelines that say what they can and can't do. Ross, let me ask you this. Well, uh, 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 maybe you're going to root for the home team here but does this kind of stupidity go on down in uh, down in Australia? Oh, no. No, not even remotely. Really? <clears throat> our education is federalized. Yeah. So we have a national curriculum. So, and the schools, we don't, we have, our schools have uniforms. So we don't police things like that. Um, our schools went to remote learning and basically pointed out after the, um, what happened is mass mandates, that's, that's the, from the state level or yeah. the federal level if it's a, if it's a national emergency. Uh, the schools don't have a say in the matter. If the state government says it's a masks, you're wearing masks. And we're not we're not also saying not wear don't wear masks. We're all we're, we we side with you know science. Um, <laughs> as for elections, our elections are actually governed by an independent body. So the Australian Electoral Commission oversees all elections from the local all the way up to the federal. They are an independent body. They are uh, a, a, a assessed and oversight by all federal parties, and they are answerable not to the government. They're answerable to an independent body. Oh, so none of this. So, and we also have mandatory. We also have mandatory uh, voting in Australia. So, I'm, I'm going to say something here that I don't know if if Josh is going to agree with, but you know we sit here and we talk about how what a wonderful democracy we have, mm -hmm. and they unlike other countries we hear that all the time too, and yet look at Australia. You guys are about as democratic as you can be. Right? And oddly enough, we've modeled our system of democracy on yours. Yes. But you're serious about it. <laughs> you know? I mean, we don't seem to be serious about it. Uh, I can barely see um, uh, Ray. Ray, do you have any comment here? I do, yes. I just spent two months in France and Italy. Mm -hmm. I can give you a little bit of information on that. Yeah. Um, so when we were over there, there was a problem with French people not getting vaccinated. So the federal government may, did, passed a law 
that in order to go into any public place, you had to download this app, or if you didn't have an app, print it on a piece of paper with a barcode mm -hmm. showing that you've been vaccinated. And that happened while we were there. And right. it, was inc it was fantastic. The whole country, like to go in any public building other than like maybe, I don't know, grocery store or something, mm -hmm. you had to show that. Now, how did you prove, um, how did you prove it? Well, fortunately, my wife is French, so uh, we had our American test, and she was able to go into a pharmacy and figure out with the pharmacist how to get the American thing into the app. So that would have been a problem if uh, I didn't yeah. have a French wife. But um, so we had the app, and, and we had we had everything. And then uh, I'll have to say that some there is a, there is some resistance in France, but when they told people that to go anywhere, you had to have that, all of a sudden the vaccination went from 33% to almost 70. You know, it's funny. Like La within two yeah. weeks. And then in Italy, people just do what they're told. The, the, whatever the mask rules are, they do it. Um, they also have the same app because it's part of the EU. To get into anywhere in Italy, you had to have the app. Yeah. Um, and, and there's just no problem. People are just way more mellow. They follow the rules. It just I felt way safer over there than I do here. I think Italy also had that big scare at the beginning too. That really, yeah. really got yeah. took up. So you're being drunk. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I was in northern Italy where it happened. So. There's, you know, and there's nothing wrong with reasonable people questioning a serious medical decision or having a, a discussion about no. it. There's nothing wrong with some resistance to things. You know, but I, I guess I just I have again I have a difficult time understanding why why it's unconstitutional and you know a power grab for a democratic uh, or I'm sorry for a governor <clears throat> to write an executive order that says you have to wear a mask, but it's not for a different governor to sign the same type of executive order saying you can't be told to wear one. I mean, it's just as it's the same see, thing. I, it, I don't the get only that difference because is we, how you happen to agree with it or not. But I see. I don't understand that when you say that because we have to wear seatbelts to protect ourselves. Um, this is if you don't. I mean, you may disagree with it, but the fact of the matter is, if you're walking around without a mask and you have COVID, you're going to infect other people, especially with the Delta. So I don't see it as just like, well, it's okay if people disagree. Yeah, okay if you disagree, but you still got to follow the rules because you're you're endangering other people possibly. Um, so that's how I see it. I, I, and that's how I felt like over in Europe. There were people like in some of the bigger cities like well, Nice yeah, but here's, uh, yeah, where, who yeah. were breaking the rules. But, but here's, what overall, I, here, here, here's what I don't get. You know, we're talking about civility here. We're talking about you live with, you're part of the human race and you're living with people in this country. Don't you want to protect them too by taking the vaccine? I mean, where is that sense of community that we should be having in this matter that we don't have at all? They well, don't think they're going to get it. They don't. They think, yeah, and, and I, I wasn't saying. I wasn't saying. You know, I guess to race point that that's how I thought about it. I was saying I don't understand how the politics of it don't even. Make well, sense. there's I mean, a. There's no, a, I, I understand. Is, yeah, you were talking no, about. I mean, it's, it's wrong for that governor to. Yeah. Pass this executive order, but oh, I'm going to pass one that says the opposite. Well, he doesn't have the power. Ross, how do you? Ross wants to say something here. We have something that's very similar here. It's probably backed on what uh, what political party the media in that state uh, swears allegiance to. Because in Australia, we have a similar problem. We have uh, one state premier, uh, sort of governor, uh, all, you know, demanded a lockdown order and a stay-at-home order, and he was vilified as a dictator by the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, another governor in another state doing exactly the same thing and they're being lauded on as being a savior and the forward thinking individual, but they're doing exactly the same thing. I don't, I have the question that, but if you actually ask like people who live in like Victoria, uh, is their premier a, a dictator? They go, no, he's looking after us. Oh boy. Well, you know, I mean, I just don't understand whatever happened to our sense of community. And our sense of watching out for our fellow man, and that McCarthyism. It, it, it probably started with McCarthyism. I mean, it goes back a long way. I've seen this country just take a nosedive in my lifetime. Although it wasn't that great, you know, when I was a kid, we did have the communist witch hunts, 
You know, we had a lot of that kind of crap going on. Right, Right-wingers have always made a lot of trouble for us, you know. So, I don't know. I, I, I you know, I'm just... Uh, no, but I mean, it, I mean, it goes way, 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 way back, even well, prior to the beginning. I mean, the most the, the, contentious, I mean, the most contentious election for president of all time may very well have been the election of 1800. I mean, you know, what, which, was, which one was that? I heard about that. And I, you know, I mean, that's words. that was between John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, uh, basically the best of friends at the time, although the election, you know, drove a real, you know, rift between them for you know, a long time afterwards. But wasn't, healed, there but an, wasn't there another one I heard about that supposedly was considered one of the worst elections of all time? No, I mean, there obviously were several, but it, I mean, I'm like just, Zachary you know, I'm Taylor, saying that, maybe? that election in itself, you know, it was just, it, I mean, it was just dirty. I mean, it was two guys that like each other and knew each other and who were sort of looking the other way when media outlets and their own friends and everything were saying bad things about the other guy that they also both knew weren't true, and they would just say, well, I didn't say Wait anything. a minute, they had a lame screen media all the way back then? Well, sure. I mean, I mean, they, I mean that's what I'm saying. If, if people think the media is biased now, they open the um, window, it's, 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 it's really not. I mean, if you think Fox is purely in the, in the uh, pocket of the Republican Party, you know, fine, but I mean, there were media outlets that existed, you know, during that period and I mean, on up through the Civil War and everything that were, were literally truly in the pockets of the political party that they worked for. I mean, they were founded for no other reason other than to print malicious propaganda for the party that they supported. I mean, it was that was mm-hmm. their sole purpose for existence. And I mean, so the uh, human nature yeah. of the American citizen has changed relatively you know, little in terms of that o- over our existence. Uh, uh, Tony? You know, yeah, I was thinking about it too. You know, if you think about it, like when he pulled out of Afghanistan, the troops, what they're doing, it's like, all right, I'm not saying, you know, it didn't come off as great as, you know, has, has, you, has anybody wanted to see it. But then they, then they try to, but what I think is like they forget Vietnam, Alex. All right, it's not the same type of war, but we were there 20 years in Afghanistan. I look at Vietnam, too bad if we didn't pull out of Vietnam four years before that. And then like, I would say people like in my generation, I'll even say myself, like I was never even, can you, if I had to get drafted, like these, I, I was talking to my brother-in-law, we get along so-so and he's like, oh, but you know, you gotta fight for the country. He said, we were never even, I was never drafted, neither were you. It's like, it's easy for us to speak tough on a couch. You know what I'm saying? While you weren't in the, like, can you imagine that they were all like, it's almost like when Biden got in, and even you could say Trump, it's almost like they want him to fail. Well, they don't want, well, like, you know what's inter- you know what's like inter- the North yeah. and the South still. What's interesting, Tony, is you bring that up about about serving your country and so on. You have You have all these right-wing talk show hosts. I'm about the only person I know who's a talk show host who actually serves and has served in the military. I couldn't even answer you for that. You you had to go. I never had to. Well, I didn't have. Well, I had. No, but I mean, you were faced with the threat of being drafted. I was faced with the threat of being drafted, so I joined the Navy. Uh, Because I remember seeing a sign that Harper Marx walked around with in uh, Duck Soup. Uh, when they were run, having a war and he had a sandwich board on that read uh, join the Navy and watch the Army at work. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, but, you know what it's like? It's almost like, I hate to say it, like I'm listening to uh, the new guy from overseas and it's almost like his The new guy, like, he goes back to the very beginning of this show, Ross. I forgot, but you know, he said something that's... He was the, Do- the, Doc so Winter. True. What? I was going to ask him this. Do you think in this country we have too many rights? Like in this country, this is the way it is, and that's it. I wonder if we have too many rights here. Like these states are all like in their own little bubble. I'll I'll let Ross answer that since you asked him, but I have an answer for that. Ross? Do I think Australia, uh, we have. No, that we have here too Um, too many freedoms. I think the way in which your government has been set up is part of the reason why there's so many problems with the way the government is run. 
in the fact that while we have the same levels of government that you guys have, um, we have clearly defined what is considered a federal law and what is considered a state law. So, and, I, and, I, and that's why we see here, like for example, with uh, you know with Australia's COVID response, is the federal government said that's it, we're closed, and the state said, okay, that makes sense. Natural disasters are a federal response. But but here in America, here in America, uh, the states have what they call states' rights. In other words, there's the government, but then the state has rights. And yet, of course, the Republicans are constantly going against that, too. But the, the, the states have rights. Uh, and that makes for a lot of confusion. I mean, nobody's in charge is what the problem is. Like you yeah, just said, I, oh, sorry. I mean, I, the, no. I, think that's part, I think that's part of the problem, though, is I think it's, it's, the, it's the difference between your Hamiltonian and Jeffersonian government styles. And basically looking at it and saying, you don't want big government, but when you need big government, you're very hesitant to it. Right. And I think that's part of the problem, you know, because if, if if the U.S. government actually had any power in its own country, mm-hmm. you would actually get a lot of the problems that you're facing mm-hmm. wouldn't be would probably wouldn't be as bad as they are. Yeah. Uh, because you got the states, you know, I've, I've heard it like, you know, states, A, wanting to secede and also states arguing with each other over uh, vote, you know, voting laws or you know, tariff issues or you know things of that nature, and then you hear you know. But then you, then I look at like, why in, is the federal Aust- government in, doing anything? In Australia, voting laws would not be the purview of the states. Am I right about no, that? No, it, it's the purview of the federal government. Yes. Yeah. So they oversee all with 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 oversight from the Australian Electoral Commission. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so. Uh, I, I think our problem is this whole states' rights thing, you know, that, I mean, uh, Josh will probably disagree with me. And hello, by the way, um, uh, to our old friend, uh, Kevin. what is that, Kevin? Kevin. Yes, Kevin. Uh, what hurricane? Oh, oh, it's, uh, that's me. Hurricane alert. <laughs> that's me. Oh, don't come with your hit out. Oh, let's coming. see. National Weather Service. A storm surge warning is in effect for this area for the danger of life-threatening flooding. Do you know, I, mean, I got to be honest with you. I live in Harlem. I've been here for 10 years. We've gotten flood warnings. I've never seen a single flood in Harlem. You may see Moses soon, Alex. <laughs> huh? It looks so clear behind you. Your view looks yeah. so clear. Oh, oh yeah, I should probably should should get a storm background just <laughs> yeah, in case. The you know, I need. And besides that, you're on the eighth floor. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah we're never going to drown here, but flooding. <laughs> Follow evacuation orders if given. <laughs> what the hell? Water in the house, you're in trouble. Uh, <laughs> I will. Okay. Anyway, any, anyway, Kevin, how are you this evening? Any thoughts on the, you doing? on the various things we're saying? I'm sorry. I have my volume down here. Anything in, in, you you want to you, you anything you want to talk about about what we're saying? Uh, I didn't hear much, honestly, Alex. I've been down in the garage working on my car, so oh, sorry. Okay, okay, that's fine. It must be nice to have a car to work on. Well, I was. I'm not going to ask you about it. Uh, oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a Did something happen to your car, Kevin? I mean, Brian. Which one? <laughs> what? I'm not... Okay, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> you bought a McLaren, which is a very, yeah. it's an expensive British car, right? Yeah. yeah. How much can I You ask? have a McLaren? Yeah, wow. he has a McLaren. Yeah. I, I live, live right next to the dealership. I've been I live right neighborhood. next to that dealership. I know. I was going the back streets and I was thinking about you. Yeah, but yeah, here's I'm like the... two blocks away from All there. right, but here's the point. Is something I, wrong with the McLaren? The engine's not in the car right now. Oh, what happened? What happened? What happened to the engine? Uh, there's something that they need to fix. That's all. Oh, uh, I don't which one did you get? Way. Okay, oh, I don't still want to talk about now you have a second car, so you don't need to worry about how you're going to get around, right? Uh, yeah, I got the Rolls or the Bentley, whichever one. No, no <laughs> yeah, I have another car. No, I, I have, Which yeah, one? I have my other car. Oh, okay, and that's Which okay. Which McLaren did you get? Which uh, one did you get? Any one of them. This is makes sense. Uh, it, I got the cheaper one, the 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 uh, the twelve C. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
But I got it from McLaren, yeah, right around the corner from your house, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, next to Tesla. <clears throat> yeah. If you hear somebody know. scream next next week, it's probably me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's there's something that I need fixed on it, so it they're yeah, so they're working on it right so now. So you, it's, it's fine. So you take it out to be fixed, where Kevin has the ability to fix it himself. My other cars I can, not just this one. What is it that one you don't want to fix yourself? Yeah, really? That, really? It's under and everything. So. No, you do Whereas, not fix supercars yourself unless you own a supercar dealership with a garage. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, did you have, when you bought the thing, how long ago did you buy this? I'm a clear. Yeah. Uh, huh? 700 miles before. <laughs> huh? How many miles? 700. 700 miles. Did you get any kind of a guarantee from the dealership? About oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I have a, I have, they, McLaren's really good about extended warranties. So I, I, I was smart and I bought the warranty. It's a little expensive, but so it's going to, yeah, they, they're just, they're figuring some things out and then I'll talk to you about it later. By the way, Bree writes in our chat room because he doesn't come on this program. He doesn't want to come on this program any longer. Uh, he writes, this is typical Bree. Uh, McLaren, dime a dozen in Dubai. Mm, Neighbor yeah. had two parked in back alley street every day. Yeah, well, they it's abandoned, true. They abandon them at the free, at the airports, right? They just drive them to the airport and they just leave them there. They go fly. If it's there when they come back, it's okay. Yeah. Really? Is that true? They even, yes. Airports, they abandon they even, them. They even go on vacation in the U.S. and they ship their cars over here so oh, they yeah. can drive them around the country. Yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah, there are some YouTube videos. These guys keep getting pulled over because they don't have plates. They have the special license. They have special all this stuff. And they say, yeah, we, we fly our cars. And they say, well, that's not usual. People don't fly their cars over. And these are like guys that are just so rich. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oil money. Uh, oil money. Exactly. Yeah, we keep paying them. Yeah, yeah. Why? But it, it is oil money. They, yeah. Those a lot of the people in Dubai don't even work. Yeah, Ross. They, they just they literally get paid by the government to do nothing. Ross, uh, just so in case we don't get too far away from what we're talking about, uh, Tony, to answer your question, uh, Australia has the same rights America does. We have well, we don't have a bill of rights. We have a statement of guarantees, which basically says we are guaranteed to assembly, we're guaranteed to religion, we're guaranteed to all that stuff. But and you're guaranteed that you're guaranteed for at least three 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 thousand miles. As yeah, we're guaranteed. We're, we're guaranteed for three thousand miles or ten years, whatever, whatever, whatever <laughs> comes first. And the advantage we have, though, is that we don't need to drastically have all these amendments to our constitution uh, to change things. Oh, I think the only, okay. con the only, the only time we've had amendments to our constitution was to recognize our indigenous per per indigenous population as part of our con population, mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. In two hundred twenty-five years, we've only had one or two. Uh, major changes to our constitution, and is, is it is it adding amendments to your constitution or just adding I don't know sidebar note or something or it's usually a sidebar note. It's, it's like it's like acknowledging things that like we, we recently um, changed the like the we don't change the constitution for a lot of things. Um, we recently amended it to allow same sex marriage, mm. um, but we do we we do that through uh, referendums. So the gov so the people yeah. have to vote for them. The government can't just decide. That's it. Uh, we're gonna allow dogs to wear people clothes, and that's an. And that's like, no, that actually, you know, laws have to be voted on by the people. I see. Uh, 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 Josh, I'm gonna. You know, I, I. It's a little late for me to start anything with Josh because it could go on forever, and we only have a limited amount of time. But Josh, I've always felt our constitution needs an overhaul. You know, it needs another constitution, but we. I'd say we need another constitutional convention, but to do that, we'd have to have some reasonable people willing to do it. And I don't think because we can't even get s small bills passed, it would be impossible to do that. But there are things in the Constitution that we need to get rid of. You know, um, I don't think it's a living Constitution. And, you know, I look at prohibition, we have two amendments. They were really not amendments because one cancels the other out. We had prohibition, and then we had the the uh, uh, doing away with repeal. prohibition, the repeal of prohibition. 
They really, once they repealed prohibition, they should have said, well, the other amendment doesn't exist, and really neither does this one either. Does that make sense, Josh? You could do it that way if you wanted. You'd still have the same same result, so I guess that would be a, you know, somatic change or whatever, but yeah. I, mean, I don't think it needs an overhaul, but if, if it needs some changes, we're allowed to change it, we just haven't done it. Yeah. I mean, uh, Vernon, I'm not just barred from yeah. doing that. Vernon, I want I want to I want to reinforce something that Josh was talking about, and that is that people who call themselves Republicans and call themselves conservatives nowadays really aren't. Okay, these are people who want power. That's all they want. They do not want to govern. They have no interest in governing the society as a whole. They just want the power mm-hmm. that they can get from political office. And they call themselves Republicans, they call themselves conservatives, but they're neither. Yeah, okay. Oh, by the way, getting back to the McLaren for a second, we go all over the place here. Bree writes, uh, in Thailand, you can buy a fake McLaren with just the outer hull for 12K and they'll put an old VW underneath. (laughs) <laughs> and it sounds like a VW. Yes. You are are, are 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 you sure that isn't what they did at this dealership? No. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I just saw I just saw three commercials in a row for your Larry Elder for governor guy. <laughs> Where? Is that, the, is that the ones with his wife beating him and him smoking dope? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, but I just saw three in a row. Well, I have the MLB extra innings package, and I'm watching the Padres. And uh, I see. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, you're Still watching. Game. You're it watching, must be the Padres yeah. broadcast. Well, it, it, by the way, he's not married. This wasn't a woman he was married to. That's this right. Was, it was his fiance. This is his fiance. It was a former hooker. Yeah. We, yeah. Let's make that straight too. She worked for Heidi Fleiss, and she testified oh, in the Heidi so Fleiss. So he's following group. in uh, Trump's footsteps. Yes, exactly. Don't do yeah, as I. Mean, I if he'd have married her, beaten her up. It would have been totally a different story. I mean, yeah, it would be fine. But yeah. I mean, if you're gonna beat the bitch up. You got because then you can use as an excuse. <laughs> well, she wouldn't shut the fuck up. Yeah, we just gotta right. wait for the checks right. to clear, and we'll be great. Oh boy, you know, I, I think it's an amazing story. Now I wonder how this is gonna Make affect. America great again. Make America. Great. And 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 a guy like uh, like uh, um, Phil is happy he voted for him. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phil still thinks that Trump did wonderful things. What were you saying, yeah, Kevin? Phil's in a cult. Kevin? I said I was going to try and call last night, but I couldn't get up to the to the office quick enough. But um, when I heard Phil talking about that, but I had to stop by the bathroom and launch first. <laughs> I mean, he must, he, must have some, he must have some money coming in or whatever, because like I said, I saw three commercials in a row for that guy, and I haven't seen for anybody else. Like the whole time I've had it on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me show you the ballot real quick. Wait, wait, well, hold on a second. Somebody else showed it earlier, I think. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me just ask uh, uh, our good friend uh, John Larkin to say something. He hasn't yeah. said much tonight. Yeah, the, um, I heard the guy that's um, leading in the polls is uh some inter- uh, a youtube blogger guy no that they uh, that colbert said that that's not the story Democrat. the real guy is leading is elder oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it is an article elder. about this youtube guy Kevin Paparath. yeah 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 that guy yeah yeah he's a democrat too yeah well at least that will save some some and yeah. there's room for one more They'll teach us all how to get rich in seven days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'm telling you. What a world we I mean, live what, in. What, what brought about the recall? I mean, it, it's, it's called like, it, oh, it's called nothing. it's called the Republic. Nothing. It's the Republic. It's the Republicans. Yeah, it's the Republicans trying to take back the, uh, been, the state house. They, they blame it on the fact that he went to dinner at, without a mask on. And yeah. that's what they're. Yeah. Using. Yeah. But it yeah. happened the it happened like weeks before that, months before that. Yeah. And it was a tiny little restaurant. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's, it's the French Laundry up in uh, up in Napa, which yeah. is one of the best restaurants in the world. We tried to get a reservation there. The only thing I hate him for is he could get one. Yeah. You know. Anyway, hey, thank you uh, very much, Josh. We appreciate it. Love having you here, Ross. Two nights in a row. 
Ah, making Australia represent. Good. Thank you, Ross. I appreciate it. Uh, good to see that you're okay, Jeff. I was worried Thank about you. you. Um, Vernon you, Nunn, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. John Larkin. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you very much, Ray. And thanks to Kevin for calling tonight. Would all of you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel. Okay, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be here again uh, tomorrow night. Uh, not tomorrow night. We'll be here again on Monday at 4 o'clock with our little pop-up show, which is a nice little show, uh, and it has nothing to do with this one, but it's its own little entity. Uh, we'll do that at 4 o'clock, and we'll be back here again on uh, Tuesday night, 1030. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And if you haven't done so already, it would be nice if you went and got a vaccination. And if not, wear a mask. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Bye.